Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single enemy, every single everything in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a uh, please don't talk to me or my grossly incandescent son again, Gary Butterfield. Uh, Hello. Hey, Gary. Sorry, did I throw you off with uh, references to uh, parenting? The thing I spend most of my time with? Uh, No, I was trying to think if I could whip up a... Yes. Yeah. Uh, Whip up a Solaire impersonation, and I couldn't. Oh, let's hear the try, though. All right. All right. uh... (laughs) Hello. Not, I don't even right? a jolly cooperation. You just <laughs> giving me the hello. Hello, I'd like to file for a ten forty C. Okay, so this is this is your your. I know about all about your Dark Souls AU, uh, where they all work at an office together. Sure, dark taxes. Wait, Gary, is that a great idea? Uh, <laughs> and it's it's pretty good. Like it's Seath good. is like a like an upper management guy who like you yeah like, yeah don't leave any maidens alone in a room with Seath. Just like yeah. <laughs> heads up, jo- just, real John Laster yeah, vibes. Yeah, just and then Patrick Klopik does an expose on Seath mm-hmm. uh, for such, and then the whole premise gets less fun. And then you the whole started premise at the gets thing that ended fun. the whole thing. I was going to do a whole bit about patches in the mailroom, and yeah. you wouldn't turn it about leaving maidens alone with the boss, and it just really, you know. Okay. Also, way, yes. now that I'm thinking about it, there's literally Brian David Gilbert did a whole video where he rated all of the Dark Souls bosses oh. as managerial bosses so it probably probably have covered that this is do you think this is well-worn territory this i mean Uh, the patches in the mailroom stuff had it existed sadly uh died in childbirth uh would have been new and fresh and exciting and people would have loved it but they'll just have to uh, everybody bring up your gary tulpa and have him do his patches in the mailroom bit indeed uh my tulpa is free it's single (laughs) and it's ready to mingle (laughs) Uh, Gary, I don't know if you necessarily want to put that out there. (laughs) Hey, folks, you can do whatever you like to us in your imaginations. Well, I I can't. I don't need to put that out there. They just they're already doing it, man. Do you (laughs) honestly think that most people listening to this are imagining us sixty nining while we record? But you because of course they are. You did and are continuing to put it out there. You're making it happen more. I don't think I'm making it happen. I think it was already happening. I think that that my words follow reality, not the other way around. Okay. Well, um, agree to disagree. <laughs> I just imagine just like both of us crouched over each other's crotches, eating like out of a trough. Gary, I understand, trough. I understand why your entire career would lead you to the uh, realization that your words have no impact on anything, but I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> the, I, you know what? And I, you. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, Gary, it's a special month. It is special. It is special month. It's astronomy month. It's yeah, it's uh, Planetarium Month. Uh, planetarium we've talked. Month. We've foreshadowed this more than maybe like any fucking thing. More than than Meal Week or whatever Food Month. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's an entire month of int- this is going to be a real. It's a challenge for us because we want this. Uh, we want to talk about these items because they're interesting. But we also want to talk about Gary's encounter with a juggler. I also I did go to something called Juggle Mania, and then also. Uh, I don't know. The, most of the people who are listening to this who aren't imagining us 69ing don't give a shit about these items. It's true, we, Gary, we, but they're also interesting, so you're going to have to hear it before I can get no, to I the know. bit I have in my head where I uh, suggest that I am now a big Kate Bush fan because of Netflix. Oh, oh okay. Pretender. Gary, have you Bruiser. heard this song, uh, Running Up That Hill? You know what? I have. Make a deal with God. It's amazing, Gary. I don't know why you've never tried to turn me on to this woman before. I'm not going to listen to any of her other uh, songs. Oh, but yeah, Gary, I was just, I was just going to, uh, really present myself as a big Kate Bush fan. Uh, cause I know that you're a Kate Bush fan and I'm a bad person. So the idea is what, mm-hmm. what is the goal for this bit? Uh, we should start working top down with this stuff because I feel like a lot of times we start with a premise and there's, it doesn't accomplish anything. Let's just, st- let's start with our premise, like what we want to accomplish and then work the premise from that. Gary, I feel like I might end up tipping my hand a little bit okay. if we start stating the purpose of most of my bits well i feel there's gonna be my a suspicion sentence. is there's just one purpose <laughs> yeah there's and you gonna use be it a, over and over there's gonna be a little bit of copy pasting the sentence it's funny when gary is annoyed at will oh yeah well i know okay so now now that we know what you're trying to do uh-huh let's figure out the best way to do it okay 
So I, I think if I come in it, into it and I, I think if I'd said, hey, Gary, uh, I want to take a second and just like really talk about music because you know how much I love music. Okay. Uh, and I love sharing new artists with you. Okay. There's this woman who just had a big breakout and it's amazing. Are you familiar with this woman, uh, Katie Bush? From, uh, from Str- Katie Bush from Stranger Things. Oh, Katie. <laughs> Is, uh, oh, yeah. Very familiar. Th- th- okay, okay. I, so is... you watched the season. You've watched the season. You've seen the the scene where Max has to has to run away from Vecna. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a Vecna, and then there's a Demi Gorgon. Well, the Demi Gorgon's from like and then season one. Hooper, Gary. a Hooper's in there. There's a Hooper. Uh, there's there's uh, a and he's he's getting older and grosser uh, as time goes on. Like there's something. Yeah. Wrong well, with he's that. a. Has he got you know, he's sick a, a in one stu- of the seasons. What? What, Gary? I think maybe he got sick at some point because he uh, really looks like he's degraded a lot whenever I see him. Well, I mean, Gary, the big thing you have to know is that that Hellboy makeup is just incredibly toxic. <laughs> it doesn't come off. Remember when that the, dude uh, was Hellboy? Yeah, from from the same guy who directed The Descent. I just watched uh-huh. The Descent for work, and then I was like, oh, what else has this guy done? This is pretty good. And then I was like, yeah, oh, wait, d- this is Descent the only good thing. Yeah, Descent is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, Descent is pretty good, and nothing else is that good. Um, but yeah, no, that belo- did, the beloved yeah. character Hooper from the the movie, the Burt Reynolds movie Hooper, where he's a stuntman, but if he, he's been Hooper. hurt, he's been... Gary, come on! Don't, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't be dumb. I was about I, to do some jokes about the movie Hooper, where Burt Reynolds is a stuntman who's told that if he does any more stunts, he'll die. But I was going to switch it to Turner and Hooch. Tell me more. That's it. You know, Gary, do you have? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. I'm always curious about where your mem- like your knowledge of anything is. Do you know they made a Turner and Hooch TV show like a year ago? I did. I remember hearing about that, uh, but I don't remember anyone talking about it. No. No, that, so I assume that, it wasn't very good. Uh, I don't think uh, that one. Uh, I don't think that one did uh, great. I'm mostly just. In, I'm still waiting for that Gremlins let, cartoon. Let me let me back up a couple steps here. Sure, please. Uh, I have to grade your plan. Yeah. To get on my nerves, very low. Okay. This is one of your worst things because this doesn't annoy me at all. Yeah. Yeah. The I idea guess of people getting into to Kate Bish, like one of her best songs, is you, only good to me. God, I love Katie Bish. For for whatever reason, and then getting people's names wrong doesn't bother me because I don't care about names. You yeah, you you're projecting things that would bother you. Sure, I mean, have I ever cared about somebody's name being right or any fact being right? Like, not really how I work, Gary. I, you know? I guess it's sort of a mixture of empathy and aspiration. Dreaming of okay. you being the friend who is more like me. Yeah, it's a. Can, can you imagine such a world? What a beautiful, uh, what a beautiful paradise where everybody's will. We got, we got, we got. God, a, I, uh, hold on, we, Gary. I, let me finish, please. Think, okay. If you have not, to talk, say my name. Not verbally, just uh, yeah, no, I orgasmically. Know. Just imagine the world quick. where everyone is will. Imagine me diving in the truffle bin that is your crotch. That doesn't help. Just, so this, that item, so this item is soul uh, yeah somebody left us a patreon exit survey that said the host personality has changed and maybe they want me to be more like will maybe that's what they meant or that i'm turning more like you but yeah, chew on that. Isn't that a weird thing to read? That's amazing. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, that's you're a fucking like you exist somewhere in the ecosystem that like influencers exist on. Uh, yes, like your kinda. personality is to some extent your brand. Yeah, and it's definitely and gotten it, worse over the last couple of years. That's it, not unique to you, but well, that's why I feel like everyone's gotten worse. Yeah, why am I getting singled singled out? <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Name, show me one person who's gotten better over the last couple of years. Uh, like, there's there's some fucking energy vampire who's just like doing living my best life. Yeah, <laughs> just really really enjoying this. <laughs> like, oh man, soul. Uh, this is great. It's interesting. I really like this item. I don't know if I can. I, go I with, like I, it a lot. Okay, I, I I'm gonna go with great. I'll tell uh, you why I think it's great. Yeah, go in, ahead and give me the give me the description. Okay, but then I want to talk more because I want to tell you why I think it's great. I don't I want to say the description, description, and then you just go immediately into your thing. Gary, do you understand so, that what we I, the platonic <laughs> form of the show involves first describing the item and then and analyzing the item? Yes, but I'm just saying it also uh, involves us going back and forth, and I'm saying I want two turns in a row because okay, so you're, I want you're to say why I think this is cool. Gary, does it? Why 
let's talk about this. Why do you feel like it damages your analysis if it has to respond to my analysis? Huh? I don't, well, because I was about to say I was about to say why I think it was cool, and then you point of ordered <laughs> yeah. us, and you were and right was to I do wrong so. To do so. Well, I, I think that uh, what you could have done instead is Please. you described the item, teeing me up to okay. say the thing I was going to say. But Gary, I thought since you, I was trying to give you the privilege of describing. Gary, how about you know what? I'll fucking describe this- the item if you want me to fucking describe the item. If that's what you're trying to say. Yeah, is this the gift of the Magi? Gary, the, the, this is yeah. <laughs> this is exactly the plot of the O. Henry story, The Gift of the Magi. I cut off all my hair. Oh, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you just... I saved myself a, saved myself a no, Gary, the uh, short story writer. <laughs> I don't think your twist endings are very good, man. It's mostly just like car accidents all of a sudden. Or you keep doing the one from the Robert Pattinson movie where at the end of the twist, like the end of like the story, they're all at 9-11. Yeah, I do. I do. I do really like that trope. I do or really like a, that classic. Or they're in a fishing simulator video game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you got me. You got me clocked, man. Yeah. <laughs> you got me pegged. <laughs> uh, and not just in the imaginations of our listeners. Uh, describe this item so I can uh, do my bit. <laughs> nut. Uh, it's, it's, it's not, not going to like it. It's not going to be worth it. Okay. Uh, so what this is, it's, so it's a planetarium item. Uh, we've talked about the planetariums before. I think we can talk about yep. their mechanisms on a shorter episode at some point. Yes. Um, what this one does is when you pick it up and all these items look the same, they're the astrological symbol in blue and white and black. They're all, they have a very nice aesthetic to them. You, you have to, you do have to recognize them, which I find difficult. Yeah. yeah. Like you're, I don't, you're going they all look the same to me. That. Yeah. Yep. Um, so what this does is it marks a boss room. Uh, an existing boss room on your map, usually just the boss room of the floor. But if there's multiple uh, bosses on a floor, it'll pick one. When you kill the boss in that room, you get a ton of effects. First off, you get the sun uh, card trigger, which means you are fully healed and get the full map for the floor. Uh, Mm -hmm. You get a buff of plus three damage and one luck for the rest of the floor. Your active item uh, is fully charged with a few exceptions of like the really big stuff. And it takes any curses off of the floor. That's yes. it. And that is the description of what this item does. Gary, please tell me yes. in uh, any form you like, poem, whatever. I've got some phlegm in my throat, but I'm still talking. What this, how you feel about this item. Tell me about your Thank feelings. Thank you. Thank you. Give me all your thoughts <laughs> on soul. Because I really want to get this. Um, I like how transmorphative this is. Because once you have, so I think when you're playing Isaac, in a general sense, for the first half of the game, you're ex- fully exploring a floor, or that's how I play. I basically want to go to every room because I want to bring all the value out of that floor. That's the game dream. <clears throat> uh, when I have this, I'm doing it in a different order than I ordinarily would do, which changes the rhythm that makes it feel like very fresh. The idea of like rushing down the boss. Uh, so you can explore the rest of the floor more easily is an interesting inversion and changes a lot of other things in the game, like a lot of active items uh, that you save for the boss or uh, the kind of risk reward that you're doing where you usually fight a boss with the power that you've gained from that floor. This is asking you to not do that in exchange for easier and quicker exploration of the floor. Uh, And I think that's very interesting. Yeah, Gary. uh, Boy, I really got that phlegm in there. Um, I accept no. your analysis. Uh, I'm filing it. May I give you, you a counterpoint? Sure. Uh, first, bosses are typically the nastiest things on the floor in terms of stuff that's most likely to do damage to you. So yep. they're the thing that you most want to have power for. And this inverts that entire formula. Therefore, it's kind of it's encouraging you to play in a way that maybe is going to get you killed which is a neat idea but is not always i'm looking at this mostly from an efficacy point of view more than a design point of view um secondary point uh as you yourself stated that this is this is most interesting in the early floors where you're more encouraged to do full exploration the deeper you go into the game the more you are likely to just be rushing the boss to rush the boss to get to the next floor uh, the fact that this is a planetarium item means that you can't even get this until at least the second floor. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think in that sense, it is a little counter counterintuitive because by the time it's really running for you, you're in a state where you don't really want the extra floor exploration power. 
But in, I agree, it's less good as it goes. But in that state, it also tells you where the boss is. So you can rush the boss on True, user, which but is nice. So does the compass. So does the compass. Like, compass is great, one of the best items in the game. <laughs> uh, the, uh, it's slightly like, I mean, easier it, to get than this. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm not, I'm not arguing it's as good. Okay. It's just like a really good effect. And it being on this item doesn't make that effect bad. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't, uh, uh, the other thing that I would say, just to counter that first point, and it's not mm-hmm. even counter. But a lot of times, so this might be a, a difference in the way we play. Uh, before I go to the next floor, that's when I tend to try to shore up on spirit hearts. Okay. And sometimes the experience of my floor is trying to maintain those spirit hearts until I get to the boss. Sure. So it is to advantageous to fight the boss. Yes. It's advantageous to fight the boss first uh, because that is when I have that cushion. If that cushion is drained by fully exploring the floor... I may or may not be able to grab a spirit heart before the boss. That's an edge case. Yeah, I know. No, but it's Gary, just, I think it's that's a, a great point. I don't think we're in conflict here. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, uh, I think it's neat because I like how it switches things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you think it's neat because of how it switches things as well? I think yeah. it's also a little efficacious, uh, efficacious enough to be cool uh, to me. And, and Gary, this getting. was a textbook example of Hegelian synthesis where you present Ooh. the thesis, I present the antithesis, and then we create the synthesis. You and I should run for Congress on opposing parties so we can show them what it's like to compromise. Gary, I think more likely I would start collecting blackmail material on you to destroy you. What if we ran for Congress and the as one person? Would, the blackmail like material, the ice Gary, climbers. Yeah, yeah, that would be good, too. The blackmail yeah. material would be called Everything to Guppy, the podcast, 600-some <laughs> episodes. 800 it, it, some. It's, a, it's a real shame because I would have access to similar blackmail material. Uh very similar, in fact. Very and, similar. Uh, yeah. The difference being uh, that I think I'm more, I think I'm more Joker mode than you already. Yeah. I also could make it so nobody could get this material. Like I could take this all down. Do you have all of it saved on your computer? Uh yes. Oh, okay. I I have a little, I have a folder that contains every single episode. I, I'm on a, an external drive that uh, contains every single episode of everything to Guppy, even the stuff we cut. Don't come kill me and take it. Wow. <laughs> the, um, d- hold on, BRB dispatching shadow runners to your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, the Mr. But, Johnson uh, seemed like a podcaster. <laughs> yeah, the, um, uh, like, rate, and subscribe to Johnson Cast. Uh, I I want to, I like us running for Congress as the ice climbers, but this episode's been real long. It's quite it's quite long, Gary. We uh, we haven't recorded <laughs> in two weeks, and Ooh. we missed each other. We did miss each other. Real quick, also. Uh, this item with the angel room item that I cannot remember that leads you to the boss room. Uh-huh. And when you're in the little radius of it, uh, gives you that like ridiculous, like plus 10 tears up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember just what that's called, but it's super neat. Yeah. That, that is a killer combo because on your way to the boss, you're incredibly powerful. And then after you beat the boss, you're incredibly powerful. Yeah. It's just like this really cool, holistic, uh, power up for you. Uh, if you like this show, head on over to patreoncom slash duck feed TV and, uh, give us some dollars. We appreciate it. Do you yep. think my personality has changed? Shut up. Perhaps for the better. Um, <laughs> you assholes. There we go. Yeah. Say that. Uh, and then you can also leave us ratings or reviews on Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict. Yeah. Uh, like this one, I uh, I completely lost the thread on what, where I left off. So if one of these sounds familiar, <laughs> just cut me off. Okay. Uh, this one from Johannes. A few days ago, I was hiking through the Alps and listening to this podcast. Passing a bunch of danger signs, a thought crossed my mind. What if I slipped and fell to my death and the last thing I heard was guppy? That'd be a crappy way to die. Suffice it to say, I survived the trip and I'm looking forward to the next awkward moment with Gowie and Rill. That's a five-star review. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that is new. I mean, that's what Appreciate happens. That, that's what happens when you pass a stranger in the Alps. Yeah, we all know what happens from watching TV versions of uh, The Big Lebowski. The Big Lebowski. Lebowski. Uh, as, as always, our famous sign-up, Lebowski. Le- Where's the money to the ball? Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every item, trinket, character, and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always, the man whose coil is decorating the Bloodline soundtrack, 
will use. Whose coil is decorating the Bloodline soundtrack. So that suggests to me that there's a song called or a band called Luna's Coil. Yes, but and that they put, I, have songs on the Ma- Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline soundtrack. You would think so, but, but check this out. It's Lacuna Coil, and I fucked up. Okay, and I just realized it like at the end of the sentence. Yeah, Gary was sipping on Luna's juice. I, I was Lacuna Lacuna Eula's juice. Oh, they the Half Life EP. These guys are video game royalty. Ooh, are do they have more songs than Lifehouse, the band that did My Name's Frank from the Frank West uh, <laughs> Case West soundtrack for Dead Rising? Oh, certainly. They they've got they've got a lot of credits. But band. do they have a line where they say, just so everyone knows, the weapon combos are where things like wheelchairs get connected to lawnmowers? I don't. Well, I had to listen to the Lacuna Coil <laughs> discography. Yep. Um, and also, did I mix uh, Swamped? Uh, yes, in Club Asshole is where they uh, where that ha- <laughs> their song happens. Okay, good. good. <laughs> good. Fucking bloodlines. Um, <laughs> Gary, this is the uh, most informative swamped. episode of Guppy ever. For, for Not for The Binding of Isaac. Well, no. Uh, for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Great game. Uh, oh, great game. Uh, also, uh, stays good slightly longer than people say, while also yeah. not till the end. Uh, people complain about that game. They're like, oh, man, it just absolutely sucks as soon as you get out of Hollywood. No, like, no. It goes uh, a little. No, the early there's... parts of Chinatown are pretty good. Yeah. Actually. Um, it's just yeah, when it becomes like, mandatory combat. Yeah, it's at the end of uh, Chinatown that it gets shit. Yeah. And then, like, you go and revisit stuff. And the Giovanni Mansion is hilarious. Uh, just empty rooms and people standing around who don't talk. Like, yeah. weird models and stuff. It's it's very broken. But uh, what? also, I yeah. played uh, a mod that uh, that restored the uh, the hidden district that they were going to add. Oh, like neat. a content restoration. I mean, that's, like, the neat. most, like, fucking modded game ever to some yes. Not. I mean, that's that's a stupid thing to say, but it's a very modded game. I love that. I love it when they take uh, design documents and restore stuff that was going to be in the game. Yeah. Like spending uh, so much time reading about the EPA in Fallout 2 mm-hmm. and then finally playing the mod that restored it was like a very important moment to my my gaming career. Similar to me, the secret droid factory from KOTOR 2. Yeah. A, a deeply, great, a deeply, a, a game made of cut of content, basically. Yeah. Still, still the, the only Obsidian game I haven't played, I think. I I, re- I I continue to strongly recommend it. I know uh, you know uh, Avion has you know not a good yes. guy, uh, but it's a really I mean, good I'm script. Still, yeah, I'm, I, I mean that's not gonna. I'm not I gonna know, pretend like a bad person isn't talented. And a lot of people made the game. Yes. I'm not gonna punish every single person who made that game for one person. Um, uh, that game has maybe my f- one of my favorite Obsidian NPC like uh, party members in it. So. It's a, and I've gotten 10 hours into the first one so many times. Yeah, but it's not a very good game is the thing because it's a fucking it, I hate it. <laughs> it's it's fucking horrible. It's, it's, Let's see, it's 10 hours. So you got Jade, to the pod race, basically. It's slightly, it's slightly better than Jade Empire and Jade Empire fucking sucks. Uh, it's a bad game. I kind of like um, Jade Empire. It's got those little shmup sections. It's, the shmup sections are all right. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's a really bad game. Yay, we um, found the faintest praise Gary could damn a game with. Yeah, it's uh, I I ever did like three episodes about that fucking game. Yeah, I just like, I, I, I I looked at those and I was like, I don't want to hear my yeah. friend be unhappy for so long. It's it's rough, man. That's a that's a rough fucking game. I love Gary. Uh, I don't want to hear him be unhappy. <laughs> just thinking about that game, just yeah. very rough. Gary, uh, no, pull out. Don't let the black dog drag you back to God, you. God. <laughs> the fucking. <laughs> Do you want to go to the dark uh, axe? The or open palm, the open the palm, is. open the palm, open, open the palm, open, open the palm, open, open palm, open the palm, palm, opa style. <laughs> um, the <laughs> Luna, stupid show, man. Little moon, today. stupid. We're stupid this week. I, I, I'm feeling so fucking dumb. I've been yeah. stressed about some real life stuff, but also like generally in a good mood. Uh-huh. And I woke up uh, at six a.m. with Jessica puking on my bed. Nice. Uh, which I then went, I stripped the sheets, and then I was like, I need more sleep than this. Because I, I went to sleep at like probably at one. Uh, went to the couch to lay down to try to go to sleep, and I couldn't because my couch is not good for sleeping, yep. and I'm tall. Uh, so I had that thing where you spend like Humble three and a half hours kind of pretending to sleep. Yeah, it's no good, man. It's miserable, man. I am I'm in a weird headspace, so it's going to get real stupid. But I'm also feeling kind of invincible. Sure. Gary will never die. 
well, you were you were like, uh, oh man, Kate Bush, blah blah blah, and I'm like, that doesn't bother me. And then I was trying to think of what would bother me, and I can't think of anything right now. Like Gary, it bothers you... me in a, an abstract way, but not in a way that's actually touching my heart. Gary, have you reached I'm the armored. Will Hughes Nirvana state of being basically dead inside? I think that I think that if I only get five hours of sleep, uh huh, uh, then I might get there. Yeah, it's like every, a, yeah, a everything gets pulled state. down into a gray, like a like a kind of like a gray limbo where nothing matters enough to hurt you. But I, I'm also kind of happy, though. I think that's the difference. Like, I'm kind of in a good mood about it. Yeah, me too. That's how mm-hmm. I feel all the time. I just say I'm happy. That's, you just say you're happy and it's good. So the, one of the least true things that have ever been said on the show of lies. Uh, this is like, <laughs> we, have a, we have a long-running <laughs> disagreement about how happy I am as a person. And it's... S- source, uh, constant <laughs> contact with you through social media and Gchat. Social media and Gchat I feel G-chat very comfortable real. in my position. No, that's... <laughs> yeah, you're being you performatively that's unhappy to me at Gchat. <laughs> like a direct line to be fake, un- fake, ha- fake unhappy. Gary, you have to understand yeah. that I keep a fake depressed version of myself for talking on the internet. <laughs> I just, that's my tulpa is just this little miserable man who just comes up with a million self-deprecating jokes on the g chat big big doubt i've just seen you be so miserable in, in a person? way that rings so true in person uh yes when 100 percent. you know that's true uh, every single time we got wings for like a two-year period i was i was so happy i was i was eating wings <laughs> You are so depressed. Gary, I gotta tell you, I, I feel pretty happy most of the time. Some, I, I mean, if so, like, congratulations, I'm happy you're here. I'm a little like depressed about my friend being convinced that I'm depressed, but. I, I really saw, like, I love those sessions. I value them. Sure. I feel like it was a lot of us consoling each other on our miserable lives. Okay, but that's uh, what friendship is. You talk about your... Well, I, I'm not arguing about whether it's what friendship is. I was yeah. arguing whether, whether we were happy. No, I was pretty happy. Like, I'm... <laughs> Gary, when I'm in a conversation with you, I'm trying to say interesting things, and all the interesting things are bad. Though that you got me there as well. Nobody wants to hear about somebody who's just like things are going good. Yeah. When when things are going good with me, and they people ask me, I'm just like, I don't know. That's why I don't talk to Brian. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's he's happy sometimes. The uh, <laughs> what's Luna do? <laughs> This is such a real episode of Gucky, man. It's so beautiful. Uh, what's Luna this do? This is what this happens mean, when oh. we take a couple weeks off. Like, it's just, it gets too real. Oh, this is good. Gary just asked me to describe what Luna does, which means he has some yep. fucking killer analysis to drop once I get there. <laughs> Wait, you got me. this is going to fucking burn down the house just like <laughs> Professor Gary about to take us to school. Uh, yeah, call my shot. I'm Babe Ruth pointing the bat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, could you uh, describe what Luna does? Yeah, I love it when Babe Ruth goes to the zoo. Just points at all the bats. Oh. <laughs> See, I wouldn't joke. have laughed at that if I wasn't in a good mood. <laughs> but it, it's, it's like I'm in a good mood, and it's kind of funny. <laughs> Not myself. My personality's changed. <laughs> I'm a worse version of myself who likes that joke. <laughs> All right, uh, Luna, uh, this item's fascinating. I fucking love this item. Um, It's really fucking weird. It is. Super weird. So what this does is, uh, the description on this is, the moon's blessing shines upon you. Not helpful. Uh, It's meaningless. Yeah. yeah. It puts an extra secret room and super secret room on every floor you go to. Uh, It reveals one of the secret rooms on the map uh, when uh, when you come to the floor. And every secret room you go into has a beam of light that if Isaac steps into it, raises his tears a bunch, or plus one tears and then plus 0.5 from there, up to a potential plus 2.5 tears per second for a given floor. It also gives you a soul heart, or half a, half a soul heart. Have a, half a soul heart, and there are four of them you can totally get. It's really interesting. This is the opposite of the last one, last item. Yeah, like this, in this is encouraging item, you to like fuck around a lot. Yes, to the maximum. Like, the more you fuck around and do the most fuck around thing you can do in a floor, the more powerful you'll be for the boss. Um, And the idea that it adds this little beam of light you have to stand under for a second is so weird. It's neat. It's super neat. Like, it just just doesn't seem like the kind of thing the game does. You know? Yeah. Quite a bit. I, I, I will say, the actual effect here is 
fairly underwhelming. I don't, For I don't a planetarium think this thing, yes. Yeah, I, I don't think if this item gave you a small damage up and a full soul, full soul heart in addition to the tears up that this would be like vastly overpowered. No, I mean, or, uh, and there's also going to end up in a lot of situations where you get this, but your bomb economy is garbage. Yes. So even knowing where the secret rooms are doesn't really help. Yeah, this you really know, isn't bummer. much unless you have one of the items that reveals the secret rooms. Yes, and then it's awesome. Uh, but then it also gets kind of annoying because then the 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 back half of the game, this is encouraging you, giving you a reward for exploring the floor, but you don't. It's not really worth it. Yeah. Uh, in the post treasure room, post shop game, I think. Uh, I will say so, that the the tier boost from this uh, bypasses the cap, so it is one of the ways to mm-hmm. get up to whatever seven point five tiers per second, which is you know. Always feels good. Yeah, that's awesome. So still, I'm not turning it down. Nothing we're doing this week is bad. Like, there are only a couple of planetarium items I don't think are very good. And even those uh, are Everything we're doing this week is... Yeah, and even though... Super interesting. Uh, this is also... This is worth taking. Like, Gary, do you think you we know, should send this episode of the show to a therapist to analyze? Ooh, interesting. Because um, I feel like we got really therapist? real with each other. Which therapist? Um, mine. How about mine? I feel like they'd probably take your side. The uh, what if our two therapists had to go? Who here's a pitch? What if Robert therapist De Niro? Pit. A, oh yeah, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino's therapist both have to go to a therapist together. Is is like couples Robert therapy De Niro's for those two? Going to be Billy Crystal. Ah, you know? uh, sure. It, from the hit film, analyze this, and the less hit film, analyze that. It could be like analyze what? Like the analyze. third one, which is about another mobster who has another therapist that's like stunt. Gary, I uh, think you mean look who's cast. analyzing now. Yeah, look, look who's analyzed that. Um, yeah, who's going to analyze this? Huh? Uh, and then, like, they have to go do couples therapy as two therapists. I I don't think this is a good idea, but I'm surprised it hasn't come out. Gary, I think the main problem with it is that you've established okay. two of the biggest stars in the world whose one movie they're both in, to, like, have scenes together, is still celebrated 20 years later. And you okay. create a premise where they never, ever, ever interact. <laughs> well, it'll be very cheap. <laughs> like you just be... do a CGI De Niro and you have him phone in. Nah, Netflix you know? isn't doing the CGI De Niro movies anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's not worth it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, man. Very good. Okay, well, what about uh, not those two guys, but two other gangsters? Uh, like get, uh, Ray Liotta and another dead guy or something. Get their holograms. <laughs> okay. It's like, does Gary know Ray Liotta's dead? Gary would know Ray Liotta's dead. Yeah, man. I watched Good Goodfellas in mem- Memorandum. Did you really? Holds up. Yeah. Yeah, Goodfellas is it's a fun, great movie. I'm going to say Goodfellas Dude. is a good movie. I haven't seen it in a long time. Great movie. Uh, amazing that it ends with uh, Joe Pesci coming back from the dead to shoot the camera. And then the Sex Pistols version of My Way, though. Yeah. How many bags in, of popcorn? In terms of <laughs> silly fucking uh, 90s. Needle drops at the end of movies. It's up there with Interview with a Vampire. Mm-hmm. Um, it's five bags of popcorn. It's a five oh, bagger. Wow. <laughs> two, um, two old white guys litigating how much they like Goodfellas. <laughs> yeah. The least hey, when it comes to Scorsese, ever. which classic? The uh, it comes to Marty. I, I call that the Last Temptation of Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, when it comes to casino, you bet you're going to have a good time. God, he's going to have a good time with Marty. Gary, can I make a wish on a falling star? Please. I hope so. Uh, is it Leota? I, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, hope mean. So, I hope someone asks Martin Scorsese about superhero movies again. Oh, man. I really need to know what he wants, what he thinks of the new She-Hulk trailer. I would love to hear what Scorsese <laughs> thinks about the She-Hulk. There's Hulk nothing trailer. I need more than this 80-year-old filmmaker legend genius, of the film industry genius Gen- genius filmmaker but to know what he thinks of the she hulk trailer <laughs> who also has never it, said anything particularly bad about these mo- like man's never yeah, said an untrue care. thing about these movies he's just like oh yeah he's, that just seems like rampant commercialism uh that is draining creativity out of stuff it's like that, not for me like yeah. I, I don't i don't like that and yeah. then and there's just people are like oh blood in the water i uh gotta know gotta know what he thinks about it also has he morbed God Has no. he more? Yep. Morbid or not. The Scorsese edition. Morbid, Morbid or, or not, not. I'm a I'm living vampire. <laughs> they call me Dr. Morbius. 
<laughs> it was my name before I was a vampire. It kind of sounds like morbid. Gary, if people enjoy uh, the show, what should they do? Boy, you know. Do you feel I like we, did we address the item enough? The clock suggests we should have addressed the item enough. I think we did. Good. Uh, this is a little simpler than the last one. Yeah. You know, it does the same thing as that torn card. Like we've. Uh, Patreon.com slash DuckFeedTV is the ideal way to show you care this year. Yeah, support with uh, money. Yeah, uh, it, money talks, bullshit walks. But speaking of, means. also leave us some bullshit uh, yes. on Podcast uh, Addict or bullshit. Apple Podcast. Do it. Uh, like this one, Such Left as. on Podcast Addict by Rex Quantum. This is a good show that does not suck five stars. And that's a five-star review. Thank you. I like that one less stars. because it doesn't present the specter of a listener dying. No, no, no. Yeah. Nobody went on a hike. I, I, I talked to Rex in the Slack. That guy's not going on hikes. I, I'm just kidding. I just had uh, the cadence of an insult I had to say. I don't know that much about it. <laughs> had the cadence yeah. of an insult because it was a fucking insult. It was real mean. I just thought it was it was low-hanging fruit. I don't actually know that about Rex. I just thought, oh, those guys aren't going on hikes. Yeah. And, and and honestly, look who's talking, right? Oh, like, I, I do want to say. I, I tried to take a short now. walk to your wedding and almost died. Look who's talking the, now. Uh, oh, Engage, there you go. En- engagement ceremony. Yeah, engagement ceremony. Thank you. Yeah, engagement ceremony and almost died. The, uh, yeah. Uh, look who's talking now. <laughs> look who's talking now. <laughs> That's the one where the dogs talk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you think they should have kept doing that and eventually moved on to inanimate objects? Uh, absolutely. Yes, Gary. Uh, yeah. Look who's talking in the future. And then it's about tables or something. Gary, what if there was a movie about what toys get up to when, when we're not looking? Ooh, the Indian in the cupboard. Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about every single item, every single uh, enemy, I'm losing the thread, every single uh, thing in the Binding of Isaac. I'm William Hughes, and I'm joined, as always, by a guy who's uh, got a bad case of Hermes, Gary Butterfield. Oh, that, that's very good. Uh, that's I, a, that's I a good, liked uh, it. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you the one I was going to use? Not because I think it's better, but just because I, I was like, I got the best one, but yours, I think, was very good as well. Please, Gary. And it didn't occur to me. Uh, somebody who uh, isn't naturally attracted to mer people, but kind of thinks that they might want to try it. Gary, that's a good one too. I really like that as well. Do yeah. you want to let's 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 do the full. Let's do the intro, and we'll okay. we'll hear how it sounds. Okay. Because I fucked up that everything. intro too. I did a bad job on the intro up to the joke. That's usually my what I do. Yeah, like no, I'm, I'm, I'm usually worse at the intro than you are. I feel like my personality is really changing. It's changing over the course of this podcast. It's changing and for the I'm going to vote with my dollars. Uh, hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every item, trinket, character, and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me, as always, is a guy who doesn't necessarily want to have sex with a mer person, but is kind of curious about it. Will Hughes. Gary, that's an amazing intro. I'm going to edit it so that you did yours first and then I did mine second. Okay. I'm Perfect not power that. position. That, that sounds like too much work. No. Well, and to what end it make all this not make sense it just yeah horrible that yeah that's what's gonna make this not make sense yeah uh this uh this item that we're talking about here on planetarium month mercurius Mercurius. uh this is something at first i did not see the value of Uh uh-huh and then got it and was like oh i fucking love this uh this is an ease of use item this is a quality of life item for the back half of the game that makes it easy and fast yeah, uh, there's kind of a theme to all three of these items that doesn't necessarily carry through the entire planetarium set, but these three are all about changing the ways you uh, progress through a floor in Isaac. Yes, yeah, uh, which would have been a cool theme, like like sub theme for the planetarium items. But I also don't want to give up ice tears. So yeah, or uh, Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Or rock tears. Rock tears are fucking awesome. I've only gotten that once. Yeah, rock tears are good. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is a cool little Mercury symbol, which I'd never seen before, but it looks like the lady symbol with devil horns and it looks fucking awesome. I mean, maybe a little misogynistic. I, I just think, it, I mean, that's what, if the devil was bad, but oh. in a world like in the modern online, oh. the devil is rad. Oh, you know? the devil good now. 
Yeah, bad things are oh, good. Oh, the devil good now. <laughs> oh, who's this? It's just Will doing a fun voice where the devil good now. Hey, fun voice, Will. <laughs> hey there. Are you available on Cameo? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Gary, we should fucking get on Cameo, man. We should just get Dude, on Dude, we, we, we just make us just... Upwards of $10 every Making year. videos for Jabrader. Just... Just go, over and over and over in the Debrader mines just for subsistence wages. Fucking bro yeah. down making me make sandwiches on camera for him. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe shirtless. Um, And then get sitting little, in those sandwiches. Get a little mustard on the nip. Yeah. Mustard nip. Uh, just I love to sit on a sandwich, an open face sandwich for money. Yeah. Um, so yellow or brown some, mustard. <laughs> Ooh, I like yellow mustard for a sit. And brown mustard for a split, for if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, if you know what I mean. Brown mustard to sit in would be rough because it's textured. It'd be like exfoliating your butthole. I would also worry that the kind yeah. of the spicy component of it would definitely irritate sure. some membranes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to dip your dick in the mustard. Oh, yeah. I was talking about asshole membranes, but yeah. Oh, my, my asshole is very uh, impregnable when it comes to that kind of membrane. Like, I don't often get an uh, asshole uh in inward leakage not to brag but generally it's, pretty uh airtight it's <laughs> gary i have i have never <laughs> less known how to continue a conversation in my fucking life than you success. just <laughs> success <laughs> gary, that is that is the least necessary information anyone has ever transmitted to me in their life not to you to hundreds of people. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Dozens of people. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, uh, You're going to have the best head. conversation at the next Duck Fest about this bit. <laughs> so, Gary. I hope not. Hey, uh, guess so, how, what we have in common. <laughs> Tight so, assholes. So, so, I got, I got, talking, I know you love talking about this. I got a tough little pucker down there. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, cool. High five, bro. I can and barely then, get anything uh, out, let alone in, you know? Oh, man. <laughs> Preach. Got the fucking Iron <laughs> Curtain down there, right? You yeah. know what? This guy yeah, knows what I'm talking about. It's us, I, the, the No Butthole Brothers. <laughs> it's, uh, I was looking. It's Iron Curtain. I was, wish it was Glass Knock, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. The doctor says uh, it might grow over. Yeah. The, uh, it all die. Yeah, the, I had to collapse the Berlin Wall down south, if you know what I mean. So in um, uh, in conclusion, Gary's not getting pegged on the reg. Gary, what is this the item inside doing? of my body is West Germany. Um, so this gives you a speed up. It's a point four speed up, which is really big. And, and uh, doors are just open for you. Uh, yeah, not no. all doors. Anything that requires a key or anything to open stays locked. So you can't just rush the treasure rooms, unfortunately. Yes, but if you're past the treasure room part of the game, you just run. You don't fight anything. Yeah, you just it turns the game into like, like Dark Souls on the third play. Yeah. You know, you just run to the boss. Yeah, because you can get into the boss room. So you can literally just like, if you have something like if you have a mapping item of some kind, just like fucking beeline it through every room. Uh, If you have Mm -hmm. flight, my God, this actually gives you wings as a cosmetic, which is deceptive because it does not. You can get this. I love this when you get the uh, the angel wing item. If you get the seraphim transformation, because it makes you look like a biblical angel, like a weird four winged thing. Uh, yeah, it's just really good. And then before, you know, when there's still item rooms, it's still good because a lot of times, so like ex- doing a room, a basic ass room in Isaac, it's not a special room. You're, you're kind of in terms of efficacy only, not in terms of fun. You're making a trade of like, how effective can I take down this room? What health will I lose in exchange for what pickups I'll get? Yeah. Whatever the, the room it, reward is. And a lot of times that's not worth it. And sometimes you don't need room rewards. You know, like you got three or four keys, three or four bombs. You got enough money. I don't know. I'll just scoot past the room. This room yeah. looks annoying. I don't want it. Like this you know? isn't Gungeon where like getting through the floors is like genuinely like an atrophy process. Like, yes, if, if you if you got this in fucking Gungeon, Jesus. Well, yeah, it would be it would break Gungeon. Yeah. You know, like Gun- Gungeon is much more focused on the floors, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and fighting in the floors as a as a kind of base mechanical thing yeah then then isaac i still think um, we gotta just pivot to gungeon yeah everything to gungy everything to gungy it's right there 
I'll talk I would, about those uh, guns. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, I will not. It wouldn't just be me complaining about the game constantly. I like the game. Well, that would be that would be an annoying thing to me. Not to I, give you ammo. I said it. Would, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, okay, but it wouldn't, wouldn't be. That be that was, that, that's podcast. not fun, Gary. Annoyance. That's Gary gets actually yeah. mad at Will. Annoyance. Yeah, well, that, that's Gary doesn't want to do the show anymore. Yeah, <laughs> like that doesn't sound fun. Like once a Sunday, just oh god, <laughs> Which, I need to relitigate this game. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like if we did everything to Sekiro. Yeah, it, what a miserable, <laughs> miserable idea. Um, did you ever get uh, in in Gungeon? Did you ever get uh, Gunther? Gosh, the, uh, uh, the sentient gun. I don't think so. Uh, no. It's it's real fun. It talks to you. Uh, it makes fun of you for missing and stuff and it levels up with you. Mm-hmm. So as you, uh, as you continue through the game and use it, it gets stronger and like the gun changes appearance and gets better uh, and gets more confident. It's real cute. Sentient weapon. Never a bad trope. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I would love to own a sentient weapon someday. Gary, Not in a slavery you... way. Okay. <laughs> so I just realized that halfway after I said it, sure. I would like to meet a sentient weapon. someday. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Man, I how how quickly could I ruin my timeline by coming out with a hot take about owning sentient weapons in fiction? I mean, you know, it feels like every six months we have the uh, are all orcs evil conversation on. I could pivot it. Media. Yeah, you could pivot it to is it slavery to own a sentient weapon? To own a to own a named sword that can think. Yeah. Like, boy, I could really, really get a lot of chuds mad at me. Yeah, although often and, it's presented as though the the weapon is the more powerful personality that often uh, takes control of the owner. Yeah. Well, the, oh, in that case, it's fine. Yeah. And uh, sex. <laughs> yeah. In that, in, that, in that case, it's mm. in that case, I, I pucker up and yeah. uh, pucker up and what? Gary? What should people? You trailed off as oh, though you uh, didn't know what else to say. <laughs> It's not because I didn't know what else to say. I was going to say something real vile. Okay. Uh, about about something sexual about how hot that was. About getting a sword up your ass. Yeah, about, about having sex with a sentient weapon. <laughs> Sorry, Gary. Which, now I'm imagining someone trying to stab you in the ass with a sword and it's just ping. And not being able to? Ping. Yeah. Just making yeah, the little Zelda <laughs> hitting, like striking a wall noise. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the hollow noise. So, you know, if you use a bomb, it'll work. <laughs> Ow. Uh, oh man that's what four swords adventure was about you had a bunch of little zeldas crawling around my body trying to find caves okay that i guess that was subtext <laughs> yeah the metaphor was there if you looked for it um what should people do if they like this show surprise me <laughs> surprise me no i think i think like i don't want to take two weeks off all the time no but this is a good vibe it's fun energy man it's a it's real fun energy. Uh, people, um, uh, if people like the show, they can go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Let me give a personal testimonial. Uh, at the most okay. basic level uh, of donation, uh, you get access to the Slack. And I just want to mm-hmm. say, I recently got kicked from the Everything to Guppy Slack channel for telling <laughs> Gwen, uh, you know, Slack stalwart, uh, friend of the network, Gwen. Uh, and Mod. And Mod. The name of the sixth Star Wars movie, Return of the Jedi. And I have I, to I tell you. I don't think that's right. What? I don't think that's right. Sure. I don't uh, think you, I don't think. The the experience of having been in the guppy slack and no longer being in it is definitely worth your donation. The I, feeling I of really no longer admired... being in the guppy slack is amazing. <laughs> it's better than never having been. Yeah, one. no, cuz I know what I'm not being exposed to. I really admire your dedication to that. <laughs> to the, what? Uh, to to not coming to, back. Well, yeah, to just being like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> this makes me unhappy. I'm not going to do it. And then following through. Because usually, not you specifically, but me as well, if I realize something's kind of like irritating me, I still do it. Like, I'm I'm always putting my hand on the stove. I was talking about that uh, exit survey I read. Sure. Earlier. You know, so like, I admire whenever anybody can like not put their hand on the stove. And I, I'm being... I'm not good at it. I'm being, I'm being silly here. Sometimes... Uh, like literally, you know, I was talking, I was not joking necessarily when I was talking about how, when I'm online, I'm often portraying the worst version of myself to be interesting because I get bored mm-hmm. uh, with online conversation mm-hmm. and Guppy Slack is a place where that can happen. If you want to see some bad Will Hughes takes about where human, Dude. like human life should go, the Guppy Slack, luckily it deletes constantly. So yeah, it's excruciating actually. Yeah, no, it's uh, really bad. <laughs> Gary hates it. <laughs> Yeah, it's my least favorite. Uh, it's a hard counter to me. 
if if like the way that I operate mm-hmm. and and interface with in the world and, and good faith. Yes, in the internet and and like it about myself and and pride myself on it is hard countered by uh a, any kind of joker kind of like full on joker like I'm never myself. Yeah. I just don't know. I I don't want to think three steps ahead when I'm talking to my friends. Sure. Uh call me crazy. Uh, but that's the thing, so- <laughs> Gary. You're not when we're in the slack, you're not talking to your friend. You're talking to the will joker. I'm talking to somebody I like less than my friend. <laughs> Considerably less, yes. <laughs> yeah, but like, talk- and here's the oh, point. You're my enemy. <laughs> He's not in there right now because I got kicked. I could hit a button to rejoin, but Yeah. And I could hit a button to kick. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and that's how we can spend the rest of our Sunday. <laughs> the uh, call me back when you're actually will. <laughs> um, the, like, will can join the Slack, Dark Will, or whatever this weird like anti Will that you have. I'm comfortable calling him Joker Will, Gary. Joker Will, yeah, Joker Will. Joker Will's great. You just uh, said he man. wasn't. Well, no, it's a great name. Oh, it's a great name for a horrible person. <laughs> um, the, <laughs> like. Yeah. Uh, then I do I have to become Batman, Gary, to fight him? Um, no. I, gosh, I could what become a sad more Batman like you, <laughs> you trying to be Batman. Ba- that's like when I was like I was I, I still am mortified by this memory. When I was uh, 10, I very sincerely mm-hmm. went to my friends Chris Gordews and Chris Schomburg and said, OK, I want to fight crime. I want to be- <laughs> I want to become Bartman. Not Batman. No, you, Gary. Bartman. What are you talking about? I wanted to become Bartman. What, you, what does that mean? How does one become Bartman? Well, you probably first get yellow spiky hair and a cowl. <laughs> and I already had the skateboard with Bartman on it. So I would oh, okay. skate around town as Bartman solving crimes. Oh, and fight crime. And fighting crimes. Yeah, like how Barman did. They, okay. at 10, they were embarrassed by this suggestion. Yeah, that's, that is very rough. I, uh, can I tell you my equivalent of that? That's not as good. Please, Gary. But yeah. it's it, it just, it yeah, just make you feel, you know, I also did something like that. I, sure. I have a distinct memory of, uh, very sincerely arguing to my friend Austin, mm-hmm. uh, that he and I, and this was my similar age. So, so, so real, real dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we should take Legos. Oh, I think I may have already told you this. I believe before. you have. Create this a recycling machine. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, create a recycling machine that like floated through the sky, recycling things as a prototype. That wouldn't work. Uh, I don't know. I I don't. It's it's very nonsense. I don't know what that would have meant. But Never I wanted let to anyone it. tell you that children are smart. No, 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 no. The children are not the future. They are absolutely not. Uh, the adults future. that they become are the future. Don't, and the future's uh, terrible. So. Yeah, the future is all downhill. Don't get it twisted. Uh, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna let's build a recycling machine. Yeah, uh, no, if you you, you, you you can just say machine a bunch of times and it'll be something. Yeah, it it it, it, it was very like, oh, see all those gears in there. That's why your robot never worked, Homer. Like it was very that. Mm-hmm. But I was, you know, not a cartoon. Very sincerely, took them into the garage so my parents wouldn't hear, and just told them, I think we should become Bartman together. I think we should all become a Bartman family. We should all become Bartman. I don't know why it was Bartman. I don't know why I was fixated That's, on Bartman. Maybe it felt more attainable than Batman. It's possible. Because yeah. it was also a kid. And I did have the know? skateboard, although I could not ride the skateboard. Yeah. The the Bartman to Batman pipeline started there. Mm-hmm. You know? uh, Gary, this episode has gone far too long for a review. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we love you all. Patreon us. Bye. Patreon us! Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the Binding of Isaac podcast that covers every boss, 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 and boss in the Binding of Isaac series of video games. My name is Gary Butterfield, and with me as always is a man who sounds like a surfer describing something that has to do with the synthesoid Avenger, Will Hughes. Okay, so the synthesoid Avenger, I'm solving your little yep. rebus here, is Vision. Yep. Uh, yep. And then you're getting from Vision to, uh, it's Boss Sunday. It's Boss Sunday. There is more to life 
open boss so take a chance and face the boss an open road and a road that's hit brand new boss around the boss can't you got it in me, one can't just let me have, fucking have it can't let just let me have it declare it fucking boss sunday i was plus oneing you you were being a good <laughs> podcast partner i was god damn it have you god. ever listened to a radio it was no i've never listened to a radio i was born in 1984 Oh man, what a what a momentous year for freedom. Mm-hmm. That's the reason um, that 1984 won't be like 1984. Oh. Ridley Scott. <laughs> yeah, go go Ridley Scott. Gary, you're Ridley uh, you just uh, politely laughed. Do you understand what I'm referencing? Uh, no, no, Sorry. I didn't seem like it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, from the little <laughs> Ridley Scott, it didn't seem like maybe you uh, it seemed like you were just maybe trying to get the conversation to go. Yeah, some of my worst work. <laughs> uh, you, you got you got me. That one, not necessarily one. your most convincing conversational dodge. No, I was trying. This is uh, somehow. Sometimes Batman Gary has to become Joker Will to defeat him. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, Ridley Scott. Ha ha. Moving on. Cross my own my own line. This is like the Killing Joke. Yeah, <laughs> except um, joke in quotes. Yeah, it's the Killing. Uh, anyway, uh, you were trying to get me to to be the visage. What's where's the idge like come visage. in? Visage. Okay, so like you're a saying, surfer. Yeah, yeah. Let's role play that yeah, real fast. Visage. Let's role play it. Yeah, I'll be the vision. I'll be vision. Okay. You be the surfer guy. Okay. Ding 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 ding. Sup, Excuse- my synthesoid bro. Excuse me. Are you aware that what is grief but love persisting? Hell yeah, my visage. My mom died, bro. Do you want to catch some waves? I've never had a mom. I'm my origins are actually fairly unclear. Uh, because I haven't seen Age of Ultron. Hey, all of that stuff barely matters when you're out on the waves. I'd argue it barely matters anywhere. Well, th- why not join me then? Isn't there a bit the in that where Thor sea. goes into a magical pool and gets a vision for Thor too? Oh yeah, the uh, the studios insisted on it, bro. Yeah, and then I've seen all those movies that you're in. And then they had Qu- Quicksilver's in that one, right? Kinda. It's not a very good version. And then they just keep referencing it in other stuff because they were like, "Wait, well, Elizabeth's actually a good actress." They referenced it in one other thing, but yes. Well, no, they re- they, the, re- uh, they reference it a little bit. I mean, they reference it all over the place in WandaVision, and then a little bit. Well, that's, and, what, I, that's what I was referring So you've seen WandaVision, Vish. Uh, I'm Vish. in WandaVision, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you're, I, you're I, in I'm, Age of Ultron as well. I, not okay. to break it to you. But. Well, I don't think anyone who was in that one saw it. <laughs> high five. High, f- high five. It's me, the Vision. Oh, my God, you're intangible. My arm. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> oh but you're secretly Kitty Pride. Oh, hell yeah, dude! Kitty Prideage. Wait, have Kitty Pride get interrupted to the MCU? Gary, have Kitty Pride and Vision ever fucked while intangible? Have Kitty Pride and Vision ever fucked while intangible? Um, good question. Thank you. I don't think so. Okay. I think Kitty Pride uh, has not dated the Vision. She was with Iceman for a while before Iceman came out. Sure, and, and she has a, a history of clauses. being into metal men. And people who are too old, because she was with Colossus and Pete Wisdom, both what? of which were like she's older than Vision, pretty old isn't for she? her. Older than Vision? Yeah. No, 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 no. Who was in way first? older. Vision, maybe ten years. Vision, Vision, Vision in the seventies. Like Kitty Pride is a mid to late eighties. Okay, like, but she was introduced late, like in the mid to late eighties as a teenager. Whereas we actually see Vision's creation in the comics, I believe. Well, Vision's body is creation. Sure, but. But his personality is based on Simon Wonder Man, you know. Uh, Simon so. Williams. Uh, Simon Williams, thank you. Is that his name? I think it is. Um, I think. Okay, you're right. so that's interesting. But I think I think we could still contend that Vision I don't think was it's born. That interesting. What? I don't think it's that interesting. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, Gary, that I think Vision. We could say Vision was born when that personality was placed in that body. Well, it depends on whether you're a libertarian, whether you think that the body's age matters or the soul's age matters. Okay, interesting. Speak on that. Yeah. I, I'll have to get one of my libertarians uh, that I know to do it. I'm just saying, I don't think... Vision was created in 1968. Okay. Pretty old. Kitty Pride was created in 1980. 
Okay. And when she's introduced, I think she's like 13. Kitty Pride is older than Vision. A year. Well, so a year in the MCU is not necessarily a year. Sure. Uh, so maybe. Maybe. I think Kitty Pride, uh, had she had this fictitious invented relationship with Vision, would be the older partner, Gary. Okay. No, I, I just, I, I disagree. Gary, you've fallen into Are a we... kind of defensive verbal posture as though I am your abuser. I, <laughs> hey, hey, what, whatever will make this, uh, whatever causes the least disruption, <laughs> whatever <laughs> doesn't make you mad <laughs> is what I want. <laughs> whatever will make this stop. Yeah. Well, anything that doesn't make you mad and punish me is good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, oh, man, like, it's a weird fucking week of guppy. <laughs> That that is weird. That is somebody. Let's not take this to a psychologist. Well, yeah. um, hey, hey, this one. <laughs> man, let's maybe not uh, think about this one or have anyone think about it. And that goes yeah, for the this, viewer this listener is, too. Did we record our lost episode today? Because <laughs> I I feel like we kind of did lost episode. Uh, yeah. I uh, I I just yeah. I just I don't know. If you really wanted to get into whether like the age of something, it's like its body. But when you're talking about like robots and shit. I don't know. Gary, I like, don't you, you, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think you did. Uh, I'm stalling a little bit because I've only fought this boss a couple of times. Fuck me too. Shit. I, I wondered. <laughs> I wondered if that's why this was happening. <laughs> I mean, it's cool, Fuck. but I just, I, I'm sure I haven't seen all of his attacks. Uh, yeah. Do you want to go back? We, do you want to go back to talking about whether newly born, newly mm, created robots is baby? Yes. Do you want to talk about the okay. no, Gary? We got to do. We got to do. We got to talk about the boss a little bit. A little bit. Uh, this is a posthumous version of uh, what's his head? Mask of Infamy. Mask of Infamy. Thank you. Uh, this only uh, appears and it's in a- Gehenna, which is a Vampire the Masquerade source book. Yes. Uh, it is real badass looking. It's as opposed cool, to being yeah. a re- great looking, as opposed to being like a heart and a cool mask from Mario brothers Two, It's a horrible, like resident evil one remake mask mm-hmm. with a metal heart connected by chains. Both of which have kind of a metal coffin aesthetic, which I say in the knowledge that it will communicate clearly while metal coffins, not actually being a thing. Yes. Uh, they, they sadly don't make those. Yeah. They should. Gary, I, I I'm sensing opportunity. Yeah. No more coffin flops. <laughs> Um, the, uh, if they're made of metal, you know, and then the Magneto, the master of magnetism could just run the whole uh, cemetery. Can you imagine him just tossing caskets at Charles Xavier? Oh my God. What if I they can. bury Magneto, the mutant master of magnetism in a plastic coffin? So he can't, <laughs> so he can't do that from beyond the grave. That's a great idea. Oh shit. Ghost Magneto's Magneto. He, I, uh, I just, I recently read a comic where Magneto died, uh, Given that you know it's comics, so people die all the time. They do die, and all they didn't the time. talk about they didn't talk about his coffin being plastic. But you think it have to be? It seems like a real yeah. like who wrote that? Uh, Colin Bunn, idiot, idiot. Yep, fucking, absolute idiot. Fucking idiot. You can tell by his name. Um, doesn't this? Did you ever play the Resident Evil One remake? Uh, no, I never have. I or I've played like a minute of it, but never this seriously. really looks like the aesthetics of that to me. And that's how we finally like pos- transition to the yeah. real topic of this episode. RE4 remake. They finally announced it. They finally announced it. Uh, I got to say, I'm, I'm certainly team. They don't need to remake it, uh-huh. but fuck if I won't play it because Capcom with Resident Evil right now bottoms out at pretty good. It's like, it's, it's a really good track record. They haven't made a bad one since they're, six. They're killing it. Like, yeah, like three, the re- remake of three is not great, Yeah, but it's still well, was well worth my time. Uh, you know, like an eight was really good. Seven was awesome. Hey, hey Gary, who Ari am I? Two remake was awesome. Who am I? They should have we made Code Veronica. Are you Cole? I'm, that was that was that was Cole. You got me. Yeah, you got. Yeah, me. he's it talking about it on Twitter. It was subtle, yeah. but you got me. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell he's baby. <laughs> he's baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's not that baby he's too sad to be baby <laughs> gary you think all your friends are sad you know it's you know what it is it's because i pay attention to them online <laughs> yeah uh gary has this weird I, uh i think it's an old person disease where you think that the personas we put online are actual people i do i i don't uh because i i'm projecting onto you i think that the work of putting on a persona like that is too much work 
Because- and also, I don't understand. I understand why you'd present a happy face uh-huh. to the internet. I have no idea why somebody would be happy in real life and then pretend to be miserable on social media. Which suggests to me it- that there is something that happened between 1980 and 1984 in our culture <laughs> that caused that transformation. Yep. And like- it's David Bowie's Let's Dance. <laughs> Put on your uh, red shoes and, uh, God, I can't remember what, God, is that the, um, which elite beat agent is blues. that stage? Oh, I, I definitely don't remember that. I know. Like, I don't, I don't correspond those songs. Like they're just listenable songs and unlistenable songs. I don't correspond them to their events. Gary, how um, long are we going to talk without talking about what this boss, we don't know what it does very much. We does. said it has a chain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we did due diligence. Yeah. There's a mascot magical. chain. They, there's three phases. They get harder. It kind of scoots around. Yeah, let me let me <laughs> let me take a good faith effort at actually describing. Yeah, take boss. take take a run at it. Give it give it a shot. Okay, so this I'll is like you. Mask of Infamy. This is a mask and a heart that are disconnected from each other. Except in this case, they we are have connected. gotten that part. Yeah, there is a okay. chain in between them. In their first phase, the uh, mask charges around, dragging the heart behind it. Uh, fairly simple. After mm-hmm. the chain is broken, they both start attacking you. Uh, what's most interesting about this, and I don't know if I've ever seen most of these effects because this boss goes down pretty fast for me. Like if I'm in Gehenna, mm-hmm. I am probably pretty overpowered. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of ways that the attacks interact with each other. Like the heart will fire something. If it hits the mask, it gets an extra effect. So you have to kill yes. the mask, which has its own health bar. The heart, I think, is what you're actually killing here. Uh, but the mask, if it's active, is shooting at you and is also acting as an amplifier for the heart's uh, attacks. And then after you kill the mask and the heart drops below half HP, it even gets an attack that revives the mask. It's a really cool concept. I just haven't fought this thing very much, so I can't talk about it tactically very much. And it's it's just looking at the wiki, this is one of those complicated bosses in the game. It, the the interactions so that are going moves. on here are like in like kind of wild. Yeah, for a boss that they put in the alt floor, the third set of alt floors. Yeah. Like pretty wild. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very complicated, very cool. Um, it made me want, uh, like in Isaac, I I don't know if I want this because I want to play it or I want it just for the show, but the, the ability to like practice against a boss, like a VR mission. Oh, that'd be interesting. You know? Yeah. Cause it's like a lot of them, you just kind of, you know, it's not a, there are tons of tactics in Isaac. We talked about it, but it, and a lot of times though, you're essentially doing the equivalent of like a Starcraft ball of death. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just going in and shooting it until it dies and DPS racing it and winning. You know, you don't have to like learn how to dodge it. And stuff. Yeah, like a boss rush mode that's like a, not all the bosses at once, but it's a straight boss rush mode where maybe there's a mode where you play it just with base Isaac. Because, you know, mm-hmm. any boss in the game is beatable as base Isaac. Like maybe not Hush, but someone yeah. could. Someone could. Yeah. And you, you adjust the HP to be, you either uh, get stat ups. You know, or you adjust the HP to make it not super tedious. Um, yeah. Gary, we just did it. Wrath we finally mode. came up with we Pride Mode. Yeah. Yeah. Pride Mode. Wrath Mode. Happy Pride like, Mode. Like, bo- yeah. <laughs> Happy Pride. Hey, do are we going to change, uh, are we going to pink wash the show? Gary, that seems uh, like it would be deeply appropriate for two, uh, like, I, I don't want to speak for you. I'm pretty straight, uh, you know, Kinsey mm-hmm. scale wise. I was just joking about other companies doing it. And I know, but I decided to take then. your joke seriously. I understand. That's a very Gary move. That's the a classic Joker thing to become Batman for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joker loves a little bit of Batman. conversational judo. Yeah. He's a, he's a master of wits, that bat, that Joker. Um, Gary, have you ever noticed that there's lots of little baby children inside the, inside the mask that are burning? I noticed that there was the one. There's the one. I haven't noticed okay. multiple ones. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm getting um, lost in the the wiki trivia because this this boss, you know, like a lot of the this is an anti birth boss originally, so it's had a lot of different versions. Hmm. He uh, this little guy that's in there was also in the previous version. Yeah, but he's happy in that. Like he's peeking out happy. Now he looks. Yeah. Now he's having a rough time. He's in hell. He's in hell. He's in hell. Yeah. Yep. Fuck. Gary, let's let's evaluate. Okay. How are you feeling right now? Uh in general or about the episodes we just about, recorded? I guess what is what is your current emotional mood on a scale from frowny face to happy face? Ooh. A mild smile. Okay. Like a Mona Lisa smile? 
Yeah, like a very Mona Lisa smile. What's he smiling about? I'm just it's a mystery. You'll never know. Oh, by the way, here's my real pitch. Uh, they put out a new season of Floor is Lava. You and me and Cole got to get on Floor is Lava. Oh. The podcaster <laughs> team hanging out with Rutledge. <laughs> Imagining us doing anything athletic. I We, t- we talked about that Frogger show. Uh-huh. Uh, me and Cole. And then uh, doing the Frogger show, No Favors. Me and my girlfriend watched American Ninja Warrior in a hotel. Sure. Where actual athleticism happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to just like, you know, people belly flopping onto foam, I, I, I which do, is all I, Frogger is. Yeah, I think very, I, I watched that little clip of the Frogger show. It is very much, they are ripping off floor is lava. It, it's, I, it made me want to go on an obstacle course show and lose. Yeah. And the idea of doing it with, with you, like a thousand pounds of podcaster coming right at you. Yeah. I'm way into it. Yeah. I just, I, I like, like the idea of all three of us just falling into the lava within the first minute. Yep. Just trying to make the the first jump, like no running jump, just a standing, <laughs> like you'd be like one of those gifts of a cat, like yeah. trying to jump up onto a counter and not doing it, you know? Yeah. Just yeah. twisted Love ankles it. for days. Yeah. Uh, if we're lucky, I might drown. I'm not a strong swimmer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not know, since like, the vasectomy. I be the first death. Oh, dude. Like the vasectomy has killed my, my ability to whip my dick around like a propeller and <laughs> yeah. shoot myself around a pool like a summary. <laughs> yeah. Um, that I used to be able to do. Uh, the trick is you wind it up first and then just the potential energy. Well, yeah, you wind it up and then you think a sexy thought and sprung. Yep. And then I just shoot down the uh, the water and then I win the uh, the camp race with a well, well-timed well boner spin. Oh, you know? Now I'm imagining Gary at camp. Yeah. I Did I ever tell it. you about going to ninja camp? No. Tell me more about ninja camp. The, like... Not much to say. The, the key thing about Ninja Camp is uh, I wasn't used to using an outhouse, and I only had one pair of sweatpants, and I pissed all over them the first day. That's rough, man. It was not great. That's not the way you want to start a social thing with kids. It's really not, even though there was a, a large component of it was a water balloon fight. But I did piss myself. I didn't piss myself. I, I fucked up the pissing and got it on the, the sweatpants. Yeah. No, I understand. Effectively pissed yourself, Effectively. but not in the letter of, yeah. The spirit of pissing yourself was carried forward that day. Hello, Gary. Oh, is this the spirit of pissing yourself? You got it in one, baby. How you feeling right now, bladder-wise? I'm, I'm feeling great ba- bladder-wise, but I am feeling nervous about mm-hmm. uh, Christmases in the past, currently, and in the future. Yes, because you're worried you might piss yourself yes and i need someone to teach me you might piss yourself at the christmas table yes gary very worried about that have you considered the fact that almost any social situation can be escaped via one simple technique (laughs) tell me more about this technique it's called pissing yourself oh it's not called leaving if your if your boss if you had a well i don't want to get into whether you have a boss but i hey there's been updates on that. I know, man. I know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I officially, I can have a document now that I can throw in your fucking face about that joke. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're in like a bad conversation with a friend or partner or something, if you piss yourself, that conversation go bye bye. That's true. Sometimes it becomes a different, worse conversation, but the previous conversation does end. It's me, the it, spirit it, it of is. pissing yourself. Choosing the mystery box every time. <laughs> it's bright. I did yellow. I did accidentally get Cold pissed on my pants once. It. Go on. Cool. Uh, I did accidentally get pissed on my pants, similar to your thing, mm-hmm. uh, and use it as an excuse to uh, to leave my ex girlfriend's house once because I wanted to go home. <laughs> so, yeah, and I did that as an adult. Give me a little more, so, please. I uh, was peeing. Uh-huh. And uh yeah, you know, sometimes when you have sex, you get some crud in the tip of your penis, so your piss stream splits. Yes, I am very yeah, no, absolutely very familiar. Uh that happened, and sure. the way it split was to shoot directly down onto my pants okay. that around my ankles. And then the conversation <laughs> I'll be the I guess I'll and be yeah. the girlfriend and you be the be you. Yep. Hey, Let's babe. <laughs> hey, babe. You rocked my world. Thank you so much for the attention that you lavished upon my uh, genitals. Hey, no problem. Uh, anytime. Uh, any, you know, uh, um, however, I, uh, I, yeah, I know. I, 
I, I, I'm going to go. I, this is very embarrassing. Did you piss yourself? Uh, oh my God. Did no, I fuck you so good? I broke your yes. dick and you pissed yourself. Certainly not. Self high five. The, uh, no, no, no. It was. So when you got a, a, a penis, sure. sometimes when you have sex, like oh, little cummies get Please man, explain a penis to me. <laughs> the, uh, well, I'm trying. Uh, you get a little cummy stuck in there and it's like, if you put your thumb over a hose, you know, as like a kid. And splits the stream. Sure. Uh, that happened. I got piss all over my pants. Well, just take I your pants off and come get back in bed with me. We'll spend the whole day together just talking. I feel really uncomfortable with all this piss on me, though, and I would like to take a shower and change into Would you feel better pants. if I pissed on you? I'd feel worse. I want less piss, not more piss. Well, what if I pissed on me and then we just took a shower together? I just want to spend the whole day with you, Gary. It's Gary, right? I prefer... N- <laughs> it is Gary. I'd prefer not to. I want to go home and hang out. Did with you just and... did you just Bartleby this fucking Scrivener me? <laughs> I did. You motherfucker! Uh, I'm now your ex girlfriend. Yahtzee. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> you take this YM quiz to see if your boyfriend is Bartleby you. <laughs> is Bartleby you? Or does hey, ladies, he have a Moby he might be Dick? A Scribner. <laughs> ladies, you dating a Scribner or a Moby Dick? Uh, because Bartleby the Scribner is by Melville, so. Yeah. Uh, which which uh, Melville character are you dating? Nobody say this fucking show's not smart, okay? It's We just made references to two literatures. Yeah, two! <laughs> two whole literatures, more than most things do. <laughs> Three, if you sort uh, of count a Christmas carol. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I Gary, hold yeah, it, Gary, take a second, there. take a second. A Pissmas okay. carol. Uh, say this show's not smart and be a liar. Well done. Pissmas carol. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. I love it. Ratings and reviews, uh, uh money. <laughs> Patreon and money. <laughs> we went so long today, bud. Why? We, we missed- well, it's because we missed each other. Yeah. Aw. Aw. <laughs>